Today on Sugar Spun Run, we will be making old-fashioned chocolate fudge. Hey everybody, Sam here, and today I'll be showing you how to make my all-time favorite chocolate fudge. Now, I do have an easy chocolate fudge recipe on the blog already. That one is made with condensed milk. This is a real deal fudge. You're going to need to use a candy thermometer to make it. It is so worth it. any extra effort. I think you're going to love it. Now, this fudge is going to be made on the stove top, so let's go ahead and head over there. You are going to need a medium-sized, heavy-bottomed saucepan. We'll begin by adding three cups of granulated sugar into our saucepan, along with one cup of whole milk, two tablespoons of light corn syrup, and two ounces of an unsweetened chocolate bar. You wanna break this up into pieces and you wanna make sure you're using an unsweetened chocolate. It should say 100% on the label. Now, before we go any further and start cooking our fudge, you do wanna make sure you have two other ingredients ready to go. We're not going to need these just yet, but have them measured out and waiting for when your fudge hits the right temperature. You'll need to measure out one teaspoon of vanilla extract and three tablespoons of salted butter. You want your butter to be soft, but if you pull it out of the fridge now and cut it up into pieces, it should be soft by the time you're ready to add it to your fudge. Now, let's go ahead and start cooking our fudge. You'll wanna turn your stovetop heat to medium, and we're going to stir the fudge pretty frequently. Now, you might notice while you're cooking everything that some sugar crystals or other impurities are starting to form on the edge of your pot above the line where your liquid is. Now, to combat this, you're going to want just a small dish with a little bit of water and a pastry brush. Just lightly moisten the pastry brush, and we're just going to brush that along the rim. And we'll just use our moist pastry brush to kind of wipe away those sugar crystals. You can repeat this as needed. It's going to help keep our fudge from getting sugar crystals in it that make it gritty and grainy. Now continue to cook your fudge, stirring frequently until it comes to a boil. Now it is important that you keep your stovetop heat on medium. Do not crank it up any higher than that because if you do, your sugar is not going to melt properly and your fudge will not turn out. Now, once your fudge begins to boil, you are going to want to attach a candy thermometer to the side of your saucepan. This is the candy thermometer that I use. It's a digital thermometer, pretty inexpensive. I love it, use it for all my candy. I will link to it in the description in case you wanna grab one for yourself. Now, when you attach your candy thermometer, make sure that the point that the bottom of the thermometer is not touching the bottom of your saucepan. It should be suspended in the liquid. So now that our fudge is boiling, we are just going to be stirring it occasionally. You do not have to stir it very frequently. And we're just going to cook it, stirring occasionally until it reaches 238 degrees Fahrenheit on our candy thermometer. This is also known as softball stage. Once your thermometer is reading 238 degrees, we'll immediately remove our saucepan from the heat and this is where our butter and our vanilla come into play. We are going to add both of these into our fudge. Once you've added your butter and your vanilla extract, do not stir your fudge. In fact, we are going to walk away until the temperature reaches 110 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to take a while. It can take over an hour for your fudge to drop to that temperature, but you do not want to stir it or even touch it until we are at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, once our fudge has finally reached 110 degrees Fahrenheit, we are ready to begin stirring. You're going to want to first grab a nine by five inch bread pan and line it with parchment paper and have this ready to go. Now we can remove our candy thermometer from the side of the pot and you're going to want to grab a clean wooden spoon. Now we are going to start stirring our fudge. Now, when you're stirring your fudge, you wanna really focus on the middle of the fudge. You do not wanna be scraping the sides of the saucepan because you could knock any sugar crystals that have formed into the fudge and you'll end up with a fudge that's grainy and gritty, which we do not want. Now, this stirring process is probably the hardest part of making this fudge at all. It's going to be quite an arm workout. We are going to stir our fudge until it begins to lose that shiny gloss that you can see. And yes, your arm is going to get tired. My arm always wants to quit before I get to the point where I can pour my fudge. So if you have a backup stirrer on hand, you definitely wanna call them in. In fact, Zach usually will help me with this. Now, 
Now, as soon as your fudge starts to lose its glossy sheen, you can see it starts to look a little bit more matte. This is when you wanna pour it into your prepared pan. Now, I am notorious for always pushing my fudge a little bit too far when I'm stirring it. So as you can see, mine is starting to firm up before I'm even finished pouring it. If I poured it just a second sooner, we wouldn't have this problem, but this is totally fine. All I'm gonna do is smooth it out with a spatula before it gets too cool. Now all that's left to do is let this fudge cool completely before we slice and serve it. And that is how to make old fashioned chocolate fudge, the real deal chocolate fudge at home. If you guys try this one out, let me know what you think. If you have any questions about the process, I'd be happy to talk about it with you. It is a little more complicated, but like I said, it's so worth it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Mm. This is my favorite. It just melts in your mouth.